Welcome to Intuitive Connections, where spirituality and psychology meet to help you be your best and brightest self. I'm your host, Victoria Shaw, and in each episode, I'll help you to awaken your own inner wisdom, step into your power, and live a more divinely inspired life. You're here to let your inner light shine. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello and welcome to Intuitive Connection. Today I want to talk a little bit about how we can be in a world that might sometimes feel like it's a little bit insane, how we can be with people who might be struggling in different ways, and how at the same time we can maintain our own highest vibration and not get sucked into the drama unnecessarily of those around us. So this is really a timely topic anytime, but I think it's especially timely over the last two years with the pandemic, with the lockdowns, and now, depending on when you're listening to this episode with Russia invading Ukraine, there are so many pains in the world and it can really be easy for us to get lost in them. So this episode was actually inspired by a conversation that I had with my son back in 2020 during the lockdowns about our different experiences. And when I realized through that experience that it was really okay for me to have a different experience than he was having, and it was okay for me to be okay when he wasn't. So that's the example that I'm going to be talking about today. But I pulled this episode out of uh, storage because I batch record and then decide what I want to play when because it felt so relevant to what's going on now. And I know some of you will be listening to this months or years from now too, but it is still really a timely topic about how do we feel okay when others are struggling. So... My son, at the time, he was 21 years old, and when all of the craziness around the coronavirus really hit the United States, he was over in Morocco having an amazing time uh, studying abroad, and with the plans of spending his summer in Paris for an internship that he was really excited about. And needless to say, in March of 2020, suddenly he was pulled home had to finish his study abroad from his uh, childhood bedroom in Connecticut, and uh, his internship in France did not pan out. So for him, it was a summer of frustrations and disappointments, right? And I'm not going to share everybody else's story, and I hope he's okay with my sharing his, but a lot of the people around me personally in my immediate family during this period of time were struggling. And a lot of my clients were struggling, and a lot of people in the world were struggling. And look, even at times yours truly was having an interesting experience. But something that I learned about myself through the pandemic was that my joy wasn't necessarily dependent on the external factors that I would have thought were important to me. I didn't really miss going out to dinner, which is something that I really thought I liked to do. I didn't really miss going to the grocery store, believe it or not. I didn't really miss being around a lot of people all the time. I tend to be an introvert anyway, right? And I did really find the outlets for the things that I really did need to do and do feed my soul, like spending time outside in my yard Uh, get into the beach, which fortunately there was one open throughout. So I was able to get to the water on a regular basis, being with my family, being with my animals. So there were a lot of things, even in the darkest hours that were going really well. But really what I learned personally from this experience was the deep well of well-being that I already had inside of me. And it was one that I cultivated and that I drew from a lot during this experience. And I started to really realize that what I needed to be happy, what I needed to experience joy for the most part was inside of me. And yeah, there were ways that I could find that in my outside world. And and I realized that some of my deepest needs are really pretty simple. 
And I was also fortunate because some of the things that I love best, like the ability to sit under a sunny sky and dip my toes in the water were still accessible to me. Watching birds was still accessible to me. Playing with my dogs was still accessible to me. So for me, at least, a lot of the things that really bring me joy in the outside world were also really present for me. But I really learned more and more through that experience about those inner sources of joy and light and being. And I really learned too, and this is the topic that I really want to talk about today, that it was okay for me to be okay even if the people around me were not, right? And this really challenged, I think for me, a lifelong conditioning that always told me that if someone around me was unhappy, it was my job to fix it. And sometimes it was even my job to like be unhappy too, because how dare you feel good if I feel bad? Ah, And I learned from this experience that, you know, my joy is a gift to the world. It's a gift to myself. And that though I could honor and appreciate what other people were experiencing and have compassion for them through their experience, it did not in any way, shape, or form mean that I had to match that experience with my own. So I want to pause here because I wonder if any of you guys listening also have that kind of conditioning that tells us that we can't be happy when the people around us are not or even that I can't be happy if certain conditions are not met for others, for the planet. And you know, when I first started doing this work, I remember taking a workshop early on, and there was this woman in the, in the workshop. It was an intuition development workshop. And there was this woman in the workshop, and she was asking the teacher, she was like, how, you know, the pains of this world are so overwhelming. And this was in 2007, so... <laughs> I think it's it's grown exponentially for many of us, at least close to home since then. But she was saying, look, the pains of the world are just so overwhelming to me. Help. And I think that's a place that many sensitive people, many empaths have gotten to at a certain point in our lives. But I also think it's a choice. It's a choice to say when there's suffering in the world that the way to solve it is to feel into that suffering, right? When there's suffering around me and someone I love, the way to solve it is to go there with them. And even when I talk about this, I got to tell you, my energy feels a little bit meh. It doesn't feel good because I know intellectually and most of the time now uh, in my body as well, like intuitively as well, right? I can feel it and I can act on it. I know it ain't true. And that the best way for me to quote unquote heal the planet if you want to use that kind of terminology, is to lend my own highest and truest vibration to this collective, to be in my joy, to be in my truth, to do whatever it is that I am here to do to my highest ability and the greatest level of alignment with my highest, truest spiritual self to do that. And oftentimes that work actually comes from a great place of joy. And that the joy that I feel in the present moment, especially when the world is in a dark place, is just the joy that the world needs to get through the darkness. If you think of your joy, your vibration as light, and pain and fear and doubt as darkness, right? The brighter your own light shines, the easier it is for us all to light up the world. And look, if you during 2020 found yourself in a place that did not feel as magical as I felt during that time, that is perfectly okay. And this is not meant to be telling you that you should be happy when you're not, that you should force joy when you don't feel it, that you should always be positive, never be miserable, never be human, and never suffer. Because first of all, I don't deal in the world of shoulds. There are no shoulds that serve us in any way, but also it may not be realistic. And wherever you are right now is just fine. Ah, But what I am saying is that where you can find that joy, where you can find that higher perspective, where you can find that alignment in your life, please let it in, 
right? Don't limit it because the people around you, don't limit it because the people around you are not ready to go there with you. So I remember during this time, during the summer of 2020, my son and I having a little conversation. And I don't know, I was just saying like, you know, I haven't really minded the lockdown that much for me. I get to be outside. I'm really enjoying the yard. I'm discovering parts of my house that I've lived in for 15 years that I didn't even really get to explore before. I was in parts of my yard that I never really explored before. I was outside in nature. I I didn't miss not seeing people in my office because I was still able to see people through Zoom and so much of my work is already online. And like I said, the things that really matter to me, like a beautiful sunny day and a walk at the beach, thank goodness were still accessible to me. And I wasn't alone. I was with people that I love. And so for me, that part of the pandemic was not so terrible. And my son said to me, mom, how can you feel that way with everything that's going on? Right. And I remember saying back to him, I I totally respect that your experience and my experience have been very different from this. And I totally understand how this has impacted you. And I also totally have compassion for people that are stuck alone right now or stuck in, in places like New York City where they're afraid to leave their apartment, you know, and they're not getting fresh air or all of the different ways in which the pandemic pressed on our nerves or people that aren't getting a paycheck or kids that you know are not getting their free lunches cuz school is closed believe you me I'm aware of the magnitude of suffering that happens on this planet every day and it was happening during this time but what happened for me during this period is I made a tacit agreement that I was going to be in my own vibe, in my own life, in my own truth. And though I would have compassion for people that weren't there, I was not going to limit myself, right, until every single human being on the planet awoke to a place beyond suffering, right? I didn't really say all that to him because he wouldn't have got it. But basically what I said to him was, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. And, And it's important for me to be okay, but I also understand that you're not, right? And here's the other thing. During this period of time, I know many of you did not feel okay. And some people really didn't feel okay. Maybe some people were stuck in a household with a very abusive spouse, right? And the abuse went up and escalated. Or you were stuck in a tiny, tiny home or apartment and you were afraid to go out or you weren't able to go out. Or maybe you live in a part of the world where the restrictions were, I had clients that, you know, were only able to leave their houses on certain days of the week right? And maybe these things felt really oppressive to you. Maybe you lost your source of income and were really worried about, you know, can I stay in my home? How do I pay the bills? Maybe you're still figuring that out. Wherever you are, I have compassion for you and for your suffering. But I also know whatever's going on in your world right now at your core, you're okay. I know this to be true. And you don't have to. And you don't even have to like it when I say that because some of you very well may not. Right? Our suffering does not like to be told otherwise. But when we match that energy with the level of suffering, when we match the energy of other people's pain, not only do we sink our own energy unnecessarily and we dim our light, which means the world gets darker, friends, not lighter. We also contribute to the belief that something is wrong. We contribute to the suffering when we align with it. And again, look, a lot of us have this conditioning that it is unkind, immoral to turn your back on someone else who is hurting, but it's not turning your back. It's just recognizing the inherent rightness in all human experience to understand and honor the integrity of the soul that is having that experience right now, to show up and support that person if there's a way that we can and it feels right to us. If we feel called to serve, by all means, if you feel that deep call and there's a way to do it, you do it. But you don't have to do it by entering into that level of suffering yourself. It just doesn't serve. 
One of the things that I've noticed on the planet right now is there is a lot of dysfunction. It's like, you know, we have brightened things so much that we now see all sorts of little critters and craziness that before we did not see in that dimmer light. If we look too closely at the dysfunction, it is easy to get lost in it. And it's easy to think that that is the only game in town. But friends, it is not. What I feel in this time and I felt throughout this time is a beautiful light, a beautiful energy, a beautiful opportunity for growth, for awakening. I hear the angels singing on a regular basis. I really, truly do. Is my life always perfect and am I always vibing with my highest vibration? I would be lying to you if I told you that was the case. But more and more, I am and I do. And even in those moments when I get lost in my very own darkness, right? Because it happens. Sometimes even yours truly gets sad, gets confused, gets overwhelmed. I love myself through it. I honor myself through it. And I remember that even though I don't remember it right now, right? Or I'm not feeling it right now, there is a higher purpose and there is a higher truth. And I will get back there really, really, really soon. And that, my friend, is the bestest way to help yourself and others through their suffering. And it's not about telling the other person what to do. It's not about telling the other person everything's fine. It's certainly not about telling the other person, well, I had a great time during the pandemic because I don't really like to go out to dinner. No, don't do those things. (laughs) Because it's not about telling the other person anything at all unless, you know, they're coming to you for an intuitive reading and they're asking what the guides say and, you know, it doesn't have to be an intuitive reading, but that's what I do, right? But it's not necessarily about telling anyone anything at all, you know, unless they ask and uh, they mean it. Let me just say it that way. Ah, It's really just about allowing, about loving, about loving yourself, loving the other person, and respecting the integrity of the human journey and of every human experience. And when we can do that, we are golden. It doesn't mean that you are callously turning your back to the suffering on the world. It doesn't even mean that you don't care. It means that you are starting to renegotiate your relationship with other people's pain and understand compassion and love on a much deeper, truer, and higher level. One in which you, again, know that at the deepest sense, all is well, and that you are part of this wave of light to help show everyone yourself included, the way towards this higher and truer way of being. You don't have to do this by telling them what to do. You don't even have to do this by changing where they're at right now. You simply see the light in their experience. You see the light within you and you honor the process of life. Now, some of us still have this deep conditioning that says, I can't be okay until you are. Sometimes that's because we're empaths and we have grown up feeling what other people are feeling and learned in some way that we have to fix everyone else so we feel okay. You can feel okay right now, right? Sometimes that means distancing yourself a little bit from people who are suffering if you're really sensitive, but mostly it means learning how to turn down that form of compassion where you take it all on. And turn up that beautiful unconditional love that says, I honor and respect your experience. I honor and respect the process of life. And I honor and respect my right right now to vibe at my own highest and truest vibration. That's really what it takes. Sometimes people around you won't understand. There are people that really, really believe if you're smiling when I'm sad and, you know, don't smile in someone's face when they're telling you something sad because they will not understand. Most people will not understand. Some might, but I wouldn't try it. But you're okay. Like people may think, you know, in those moments, it means that you don't care, that you don't love, right? 
And of course, compassion sometimes means, you know, understanding and hearing somebody's suffering for a moment and validating that their experience is right and true for them in this moment of time, right? But we can do that without going there with them. So I invite you moving forward, if you feel the call to do a couple of things along the lines of this topic today. Number one, if this feels like you are someone who tends to feel that loving and caring means trying to fix it or trying to match it or going into someone's pain with them, I'd love you to meditate on that and maybe see where you first learned that lesson. Imagine yourself floating back. Where's the first time I learned that this was the way to be? Was it from a parent? Was it from a friend? Was it from because I didn't feel that the other people, you know, were hearing me. And so I want to get that hurting part of myself, you know, heard by hearing other people's pain, because that is a common one for many people. And on that one, I can say, just start being a witness for your own experiences. And then things will shift naturally. Because really honoring other people's experiences is just being there, being a witness, holding space. It's not getting sucked in. It's not believing that you have to feel bad because they feel bad. It's not talking them out of it, right? And it's not talking yourself out of it either. It's simply being the beautiful, clear, calm, witnessing presence that loves them and loves yourself through whatever's going on right now. And when we can do that, we can easily come back to our center. We can easily come back to our truth. And we can easily find joy in whatever we're experiencing, or at least we can find peace with ourselves and with our world in the present moment. And that, my friends, is all you ever really need to do. All right. Well, that seems to be all that wants to come through right now today. I hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. This was definitely a something that I needed to hear again, which is probably why I was prompted to share. I'd love to hear your comments on this and all the topics that we cover in these episodes in this podcast. Uh, and you can do that by joining the Intuitive Connection community on Facebook if you are a Facebook person and sharing there, or you can always reach out to me via email. If you're struggling with that compassion fatigue and trying hard not to take on the weight of the world and the weight and the pains of those around you, and you would like a little bit of help managing your relationships with others and even your own pains, you can always reach out. I offer one-to-one sessions, intuitive consultation, counseling, readings, all of that good stuff. And we can always tune in, you and I, one-on-one and see how the guides would like to support you through whatever's going on. So I thank you all again for tuning in and namaste. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you found joy, strength, inspiration, and clarity from today's episode. If you'd like to learn more and connect with an amazing group of like-minded souls, please join us over on Facebook in the Intuitive Connection Community Facebook group, where we explore these topics in deeper detail, have additional live teachings, and host Facebook Lives with our amazing guests. I hope to see you there. And of course, if you want to learn more about me or the work that I do, please check out my webpage, victoriashawintuitive.com. Thank you so much again and namaste.